In today's lecture, we are going to deal with reflex klystron. Please note, reflex klystron is an oscillator. Two cavity klystron, which we had learned in earlier lectures, is acts as an amplifier. This is an oscillator. Being an oscillator, it does not require two cavities. It will work with a single cavity. And oscillators also do not require an input. They are, always have an uh, inbuilt noise, which acts as an input to the uh, already existing uh, already existing cavity. And as a result, they, this results in the sustained oscillations. As you can see in the diagram, as you can see in the diagram, there is no input. It's always an output. This is a common mistake which students always do. So please be careful. We always show an RF output. Input is always the switching transients which is present, which acts as an uh, input to your oscillations. Uh, the specialty about the reflex klystron, it is a single cavity. And here again, you have the cathode from which the electrons will be emitted out. We will be having interaction. We will be having velocity modulation. All the derivation will not be again shown because it is exactly same as two cavity klystron. If suppose in papers, two cavity klystron or a reflex klystron velocity modulation is asked, you can write the same thing. Maybe for reflex klystron, you can just change the phase. Instead of plus, you can make it as negative. I will show it to you in the next slide. And uh, for this, you have shown that the input is already there. Vs, V1, sin omega t. And this, the electrons after getting interacted, what will happen? The electrons will, the fast moving electrons will move at a faster speed. The slow moving electron will, uh, will reach at a slower pace. And the zero cross section velocities will be even more lesser. At the same time, there is something called as a repeller. What do you think will be a repeller? Repeller will make sure that the electrons are getting repelled and coming back to the cavities. They are re-entering back to the cavities. Now, what will be the charge on this repeller? Of course, it has to be negative charge so that the electrons, negative charge electrons, when they are coming, they get repelled and then they are coming back to the uh, cavities. The repeller will be highly negative charge, will be highly negative charge as compared to so T0 is a time, you can see over here T0 is a time at which electrons enter the cavity. T1 is a time at which electrons come out of the cavity. So up to the time, it will, it will spend some time in this space, in this drift space, and then the electrons will come back at time T2. Is it clear? This diagram is called as an apple gate diagram. It is, uh, it is after the name of the scientist who had discovered this uh, mechanism. It is called as apple gate diagram important in apple gate diagram what we do is we are going to find the mode of oscillations the mode of oscillation is very interesting how do you do i hope you remember the velocity modulation positive half cycle i'm just marking positive half cycle velocity of the uh, the velocity gets accelerated zero cross section it is still the same i mean no change in the velocity negative half cycle v minus you remember v minimum the is retarded now, how do I calculate the mode of oscillations? Look at the way I'm going to mark. I start this way from here. I'm starting with a zero cross section. This entire thing is one, right? From here to here, it becomes half. And this is one fourth. Please mark over here. Yes, this is this point I'm trying to tell. Sorry, it's not done proper. Just rub this off. I'm just going to mark it again for you all so it becomes easier. Just wanted to show you this is the point I'm trying to say. What is this point? Where did I start from? From here. And where did I stop? Here. What is this mode called? It's called 1, 1 from here. From 1, this is the entire 1 lambda and the 3 fourth part. This is called 1, 3 by 4 mode. What is so speciality about this 1, 3 by 4 mode? Speciality about 1, 3 by 4 mode is that it is that mode in which we get sustained oscillations. Means the oscillations will neither decay, neither it will go more than the sustained, more than the excess value. So you are neither we are going to get a decayed oscillations, nor we are going to get an under damp or over damp. We are going to get a sustained oscillations. That is the mode one three by four. Now the question that comes is that when one three by four the mode of oscillation is coming, what is the number of how many cycles are you using? Even though it started from zero cross section, can I say that this part was also there? Am I right? This positive half cycle was also there. So the number of cycles for one three by fourth mode will be always equal to n equal to two. So in paper they can ask you for two three by four you will take n equal to three. Suppose three three by four you will take small n equal to three. Is it clear? 
uh, in this x and y axis you have seen what they have done a b c is the electrons and this is the distance from the gap this is a gap voltage they have plotted against the time field i hope the uh, apple gate diagram is clear for you all in this we are going to start with the derivation for reflex lyson so what do you do in this in the reflex lyson derivation we will again start with finding the uh, velocity map. For velocity modulation, we start with saying that well, how did you come to this formula? You remember into cavity cluster, we had taken kinetic energy equal to potential energy half m b square equal to potential energy. It is there into cavity cluster, and from there we came the DC electron velocity to be 0.593 into 10 to the power 6 into square root of v. The velocity modulated wave equation you can refer to cavity cluster. Same equation, same equation you have got. Instead of minus, you can put here plus. In uh, two cavity, we have put plus. Reflex lyson, we are putting negative. So do not get surprised on this. If, if, even if you write plus, it is not wrong because this is an angle. It can go on changing plus or minus value. Now comes the real derivations. What is this? The E is what electric field. So electric field intensity is potential upon length. How many potentials do you have? One. DC electron velocity. Am I uh, sorry? Your DC accelerating voltage. That is the cathode. Sorry, it's not. Uh, yeah. So you are having the DC electron velocity. Sorry, a voltage, right? This one. Then you have the uh, in uh, the switching transients, and then you of course have you have the repeller voltage. So these are the three voltages which you are going to have, right? But in this. can we say that this voltage is going to be switching transients which is a noise like thing which is going to be very very small as compared to these two hence we are neglecting what is e voltage upon length we have just written that we also know the formula that force equation is given as force is equal to mass into acceleration do you agree with this point force f is always equal to what is force equal to everybody force is always equal to mass into acceleration Okay. Suppose you give you, uh, we give you a velocity, uh, we give you a distance z, a displacement z. If I take derivative of dz by dt, what is it called? Velocity. If you take uh, second derivative of that velocity, what will you get? Acceleration. So I have taken d square z by dt square, assuming z is going to be the distance that it's going to transverse from your uh, your uh, cavity up to the repeller. right so this mass uh, uh, sorry mass into acceleration will be equal to minus ee don't get surprised these are all physics laws force is equal to minus ee so e capital e that is electric field formula you know we have just substituted now now we take the derivative because at the end of the day we need to find the value of the repeller voltage that is what we are trying to do so we are going to take the derivative of this when you take the derivative how will you take uh, sorry uh, when we take the integration so that i get dz by dt from this how do i take the integration everybody can you help me with that so when i am taking derivative can I, uh, when i am taking integration what happens this m comes down right this m comes down that is what is done this m comes down and this d square z by dt square becomes dz by dt am i correct so minus e vr plus v not upon ml integration from t1 to t dt when you are solving this what is integration of 1 dt it is t and substituting the limits you get t minus t1 now you must be uh, surprised that why did we take t1 to t please don't be surprised you remember in the cavity gap equation there is cavity gap diagram in numeric how do you make the cavity gap diagram you had seen the cavity gap diagram in that we had clearly uh, told t0 what was t0 time taken by the electron to enter the cavity T1, remember, is a time at which the electron will come out of the cavity and travel up in space to reach the repeller. So this T1, so they have taken as T1 to T. This is that T1. It is substituted plus k. Now definite integral. When I am trying to solve the constant, I have a question to you. What happens at time t is equal to T1? Okay. What happens at time t is equal to T1? I'll tell you. At time T1, t is equal to T1. What happens over here? When you write t is equal to T1. Over here, t1 minus t1 will become zero. So k plus zero is equal to what is this? This is a velocity. What is the velocity at uh, time t1? It is nothing but velocity at that t1 will be velocity modulated wave. So we just write here as v of t1. So it is a velocity modulated wave which you are going to get. 
right? That's the value of constant you're going to get in the next slide. As I told you in the earlier lecture, at time is equal to at uh, time is equal to t1, you are getting your velocity as v of t1. We have just substituted that and again took the derivative, uh, again took the integration. So that I'm getting distance n. When I'm taking the integration again, this time t1 minus t minus t1 was a v of t1 was alone. We will take the integration t1 to t. This will come as t only and t you can substitute as t minus t1. This one is t minus t1 that is integration of t dt is t square by 2. This is what t square by 2 the limits are substituted. Now in this you have to be very careful. At time t is equal to t1 z equal to d. Do you agree with that? Yes. Meaning at time t1 t1 is the time at which electron came out of the cavity gap and is moving up. How much distance did it travel? Answer is d. See over here answer is d. So we have substituted d over the constant here. Now I have a question for you. What happens at time t is equal to t2? What is t is equal to t2 students? Do you recollect that? t is equal to t2 was the electrons moves up into the uh, to up to the repeller. It comes back and it returns back to your cavity. It returns back to the cavity. So now the question we do not know how much distance it has traveled. So for our easy case for our reference we just take that the distance traveled is at least minimum d. So we are substituting d over here. Since we substituted d over here, both the d gets cancelled out. That's why you're getting 0 here. Am I clear with this? So both this d gets cancelled out over here, right? I'm just substituting d over here. Both gets cancelled out. And the remaining terms comes to the left-hand side. You can see the remaining terms will come to the left-hand side. And from this, you need to find the value of t2 minus here. What is it? 2 ml upon e vr plus v0. We have just solved this equation, nothing else. Don't worry. We just solved this equation. Uh, into v of t1. This is t, t dash and uh, in this t dash is equal to t2 minus t1 we have just substituted. They have uh, solved the equation for v of t1. Do you re recollect the formula of v of t1? Velocity modulated equation is very very important used every time. So you need to buy hard that. That v of t1 comes out to be as remember uh, 1 plus beta i v1 by 2 v0 and sin omega t minus so that has been substituted and on substituting the entire equations what do you get at the last at the last you will come to an equation that t naught dash and in this t naught dash equation comes out to be 2 ml v naught upon e vr plus v naught this is the equation what is this this is nothing but can i say this is dc transit time dc transit time i put a dash over here because klystron you have written t naught and reflex klystron formula we normally do it by a dash sign. So T naught dash either DC transit time, the formula comes out to be as 2 ml V naught upon E VR plus V naught. Is it clear? Okay. Continue with the derivation when you are taking, when you are taking, multiplying both the sides by omega for the T2 minus T1, don't get surprised, this was your T dash. This was your t dash. When you multiply both sides by omega, when you multiply it, you are going to get this as uh, same way like uh, klystron, uh, 2 cavity klystron. Theta naught dash, this becomes again bunching parameter. Do you recollect this, students? Bunching parameter, right? Same bunching parameter comes again. Same bunching parameter is coming again. Beta i v1 by 2 v0 into theta naught dash. What is theta naught dash? That is omega into t naught dash. Now, this omega t2 minus t1 is equal to omega 2 naught dash. I have written bunch of parameter, uh, designated by x, x dash. Okay. Now, this thing, why have we written as n minus 1 by 4 into 2 by n? Are, are you surprised to see this? Please do not get surprised. You, if you remember Applegate diagram, in Applegate diagram, we have already explained this concept to you. We, we know that it is always going to be some mixed fraction. 1, 3 by 4, 2, 3 by 4, 3, 3 by 4 for sustained oscillation. So in terms of equations, we are going to write it as n minus 1 by 4 into 2 pi n. So we write it as 2 pi n minus pi by 2. When we open the bracket, we always write it in this way. So in your notes also, you are going to write it as either 2 pi n minus pi by 4 or 2 pi n. This is the condition to be satisfied to get sustained oscillation. Just like 2 cavity klystron, Current modulation also takes place in reflex klystron, and in current modulation again you get a DC value, you get a DC value, and as a result, lot of current, uh, lot of power is lot of power is dissipated in the form of heat, 
Hence, a cooling fan is also required for reflex lystron. You will see that in our lab. And in our lab, reflex lystron is used as a microwave source. Huh? The first block which you see always will be a reflex lystron. We do have gun, gun diode also oscillator in our lab. But most probably, we will be using reflex lystron as a microwave source for generating the microwave signal. So this is 2 I0 beta J1 of X dash. Don't be surprised. Now, since last time it was J1 X for Klystron, this time it is J1 X dash. The value of J1 X dash, if not in given in paper, you should know it is going to be 0 0.52. Last time it was 0 0.582. This time it is 0 0.582. Sorry, 0 0.52. The value of X dash, if they are not given, you should know it is 2.405. 2.405. Please note for reflex klystron it is 2.405, whereas for your uh, klystron it was 1.841. I hope you remember these values for your papers. Huh? These values will not be given. So similar to 2 cavity klystron, you have I2 induced uh, current. You are going to find the DC power as V0 into I0. This we are taken in efficiency of uh, klystron. Same formula. AC power, I told you, when you are taking average, uh, root 2 root 2 gets multiplied and you get the formula as like this. If you want, you can find the uh, output uh, voltage, that is the voltage gain, you can find by this way. Right? Uh, AC power, this is finding the AC power at the end. Uh, we have no option, but we have to just uh, uh, solve it and get this equation. No need of by hearting students, you can just take this formula. It's very simple. Because PDC is always going to be V0 into I0. What will be PAC? PAC will be again voltage into current. But this voltage and current is going to be this V1 into I, uh, your I2. That is a, actually I2 is the wrong way of uh, denoting it. This cannot be I2. You don't have a second cavity, right? So you have the I2. I2 is normally we say for the output cavity. For us, we do not have two cavities in uh, reflex lifestyle. So we will just take it as I2 normal uh, your output. So this output current. So, output current multiplied by input current, that formula has to be substituted here and got the, uh, has to be solved. And let us take a problem. 